Uh, all this is saying is that it's round and circular and it's three-dimensional. But it's circular everywhere. So from all views, it's circular, okay? Uh, unlike a cylinder, which you know, kind of looks like a rectangle from some other views, okay? Uh, complete the graphic organizer, yeah. Uh, there you go, if you wanted these, it's fine. You have a circle, you have a radius, the center is good. Then it looks like, a, I don't know, basketball or the moon or some other spherical object. I don't know. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so really all we're worried about here is the, the radius. Okay. So if we look at this example, uh, I can read this open. Yeah. Brittany purchased a necklace. Uh, the diameter of this thing is 7.5 millimeters. And what we need to do now is find the radius. So what would the radius be of this thing? And the uh, 3.75, right? Millimeters, okay. Uh, you guys should be pretty good at finding the radius from a diameter, all right? Now, finding the circumference is very easy. All you got to do is multiply pi times d, and you're good. But uh, really, we just need practice finding the radius. So we're not too worried about this example. No, whatever. 23.6 millimeters. Bam. All right, the volume of a sphere. So here's the thing is, if you look at this, this one, okay? Uh, if you have the radius, then you can find the volume of a sphere, all right? All you can do is take four-thirds of all this other garbage, okay? So, does anyone remember the formula for finding the volume of a cylinder? Tatum? It is... Oh. Well... Uh, what? Okay, well, anyways, you're just going to take the radius squared times pi, which is the area of a circle, and they're going to multiply it by the height. Okay. Well, that would be the volume of a sphere. <clears throat> and uh, the volume of a cone was all of this stuff. You just divide it by three. All right? So you can see there's a little bit of that in this. All right? uh, but the thing is, is essentially the height of this cylinder is the radius and then the four-thirds comes in that that gets a little complicated there so don't worry about that too much all right uh, but what you do need to know is this formula okay four-thirds pi r cubed so you're just going to take the radius cube it times pi mm -hmm. and then multiply it by four-thirds if we were to find the volume of this sphere we're going to use the same formula which was 4 thirds pi r cubed. However, the problem is, is that it tells us the radius, so we're just going to get rid of the r. We actually know the value of r is 6. six. And the calculator will do all this stuff for you, so put that in parentheses. Maybe if you wanted to, you could put the parentheses over here. Well, whatever. All right. You can put all of this stuff in the calculator, this 4 thirds pi r cubed, and it will give the answer 904.8 cubic millimeters, all right? Good. Here's this example. Uh, you guys try this one. Find the volume of this basketball to the nearest tenth. Find the volume of these.
this example, they did find the volume. Then at the end here, you're just going to divide by the coefficient of x. 325 would be 1.6. 1 1.6 minutes to inflate. All right, so the volume of this golf ball, take 4 thirds pi times, what is the radius of this? I don't know. Yeah, break. 21.3. Seems like there should be more decimals in there. Is it 35? 335? Three, Thank you. 335, okay. Well, we're going to cube that. And again, the calculator will do all this for you. So it gives us a volume of. Forty thousand six hundred seventy-eight. Let me see. Let me try. Forty six seventy-eight point six five one eight one. And uh, then it tells us the mass is forty-five point nine three grams. So what's the number of grams per cubic millimeter? So this means we need to take the number of grams. This this forty-five point nine three grams. And divide it by this garbage. Because it is grams divided by cubic millimeters. And what does that give us? 5.93 divided by that garbage. It's very small. So we need the nearest ten thousandth. That's 0, 0.00. And a ten hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. Bam. And this would be grams per millimeter cubed. So let's find the volume of this. We're going to take four thirds pi I got it. times the radius, three cubed. And what did that give us? 113. 113. Point, what? 1. 0.29. Sure, 2.9 works. I mean, 0.9, sorry. 0.9, whatever. Yeah, 0.9. 0.9, thank you. And this is centimeters cubed. We're just going to divide this by the rate 1.8 centimeters cubed divided by, uh, per minute, rather. And that'll give us our 62.8. Four thirds pi r cubed right now, but it's cut in half because the sphere has been cut in half. So, so find the volume of this. All right, whatever. Well, what's the radius? 14. Yeah, Dawson. Fourteen. Fourteen centimeters. Very good. So we're gonna treat this as though we're a full sphere. We got 4 thirds pi times 14 cubed. That's a 14. Uh, what does that equal? Something kind of big, right? Be a large, full volume. Yeah, Drake, what do you what? got? No, like, what if you, wouldn't you just do 1 half pi? Oh, so you're taking half of this? But yeah, but let's find the actual volume of it first. Josh, what do you got? Oh, 1.494.04. Okay, very good. So if this was a full sphere, this would be the volume. But since it's a hemisphere, we're just going to divide it by 2. We'll just divide that, uh, divide that by 2. And see what you get? Drake, what do you got? Uh, I got 4,310.265121. That seems slightly off. Dawson, what'd you get? 5,747.02. Very good. 0 0.02 centimeters cubed.
this, so the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And what are we looking for? The radius? The radius? Okay. Well, you gotta, we got to move everything over to this side except for the radius. Okay. So in other words, we're going to treat this as though it were a coefficient of r cubed. Okay. So does anyone remember how we move it to the other side? It's the last step in the switch and stay game. Yeah, you can do that. Or you could say just divide by the coefficient. Okay. So in this case, you'd have v divided by 4 thirds pi. Well, you can't divide by fractions, right? So you've got four, v times 3 fourths pi. Wait, hold on. Let me double check that. Yeah, hold on. Nope, the pi is with the denominator here. So and the pi is right here. You don't have to understand this right now. In ninth grade, they'll make you start manipulating equations a lot, but uh, for now, you guys don't really have to worry about it. Okay. So I'll be putting it on your calculator. Well, here's the next thing: is uh. This would equal r cubed, but we can't have r be cubed. So we've got to get rid of the cubed. So, you just divide it by the so when this is all said and done, what you end up with is the radius is volume times 3, 4 pi, right hand like this. Now let me write this another way as well. So you've got 3 times the volume divided by 4 pi. But now what you got to do is take the cube root of this garbage. How do you do cubic roots without a calculator? You got to think really hard. <laughs>